My dudes, are you bored of doing this 50-50? If so, it is time to step up your game and learn how to turn your board sideways as easy and safe as possible. But first, let's get inspired by this awesome snowboard montage. Now, the very first thing that we want to do is as we're riding in, our eyes are looking at the end of the feature. One thing that's really awesome about that is if I look down, I tend to drop my shoulders down and it puts us in a less awesome position. And if I keep my eyes up or at the end of the box, it keeps my spine in a better position to be balanced. After that, I love talking about keeping the lead shoulder pointed at the end of the rail as the your board goes sideways, and the reason is your lower body is gonna follow where your upper body is. So if I keep my lead shoulder pointed at the end of the rail, jump into a little bit of a board side, because this shoulder's pointed downhill, my lower body wants to come back to that neutral position. So as you're doing this board side, I highly recommend keeping your eyes and lead shoulder pointed at the end of the rail. It's gonna make things 10 times easier. So there's two major ways to do a backside board side. One is gonna be called the scissor method. The other method, pivot your back foot around, almost like you're doing a basketball pivot. That's gonna allow our board to go sideways. Now the pivot movement is 60% of my weight meaning my belly button is gonna shift over my lead foot. Notice that my lead shoulder, hip, and knee are all stacked together. And then I'm just gonna imagine that I am dribbling a ball and I'm doing this pivot movement. But of course, we're gonna make sure that we're adding this lead shoulder. So my lead shoulder is pointing down towards you and then I'm pivoting. Notice that my spine is rotating and you're seeing a little bit of my logo, but not a lot. You're not seeing all of it, but you're seeing a little bit. And the most important thing about this tactic is making sure that you have 60% of your weight over your lead foot, making that pivot a thousand times easier. And then our method number two is gonna be the scissor mechanic. Now our goal is take our lead foot and I'm gonna pull it behind me 45 degrees and I'm gonna take my back foot and push it forward for another 45 degrees, which combines makes us a 90 degree board side. Now as I do this, I wanna keep my lead shoulder pointed straight downhill Notice that my legs are doing the work, not my shoulder. Most people tend to do this, but now guess what? I've messed up my shoulder positioning, so I'll keep my shoulder down the fall line, a little bit of a hop, come back. Did you know that the majority of goggle companies are owned by massive corporations? And I've started a goggle company with the dedication to making your day as awesome as possible. So if you ever put goggles on and off that are magnetic, these things just wanna pop out because they are, you know, a little soft, a little flexy. So what I've done is I've added this post here, allowing you to line it up and then you get a lot, insane amount of vertical support. So when you're taking your goggles on and off that you know it's super awesome. Additionally, I've added thicker straps because one of the biggest fail points of goggles is your straps get a little wet, get a little soaked, and then they stretch out. Now all of a sudden I can't use my goggles, but with the viewfinder goggles, we've made them thicker, but you can also get interchangeable straps. So if you need to replace it, it makes it more of a sustainable, long lasting product because you can just replace the straps. We also have Zeiss lenses, which are an extremely high quality lens. And for me personally, I just wear these dark lenses every day because it's clear and I can see in all conditions. So if you're interested in picking up Benetech viewfinder goggles, check out the link down below. Look at that, look at that, woo! One of the biggest things that people are gonna struggle with when it comes to board sides is being on an edge. Now, absolutely, when you're on a box, you want to be flat base. That means you have equal pressure on the toe of your feet as you do on your heel so that your board is nice and flat. If we happen to take our belly button and lean back over our heels or our toes, we're gonna create tilt, which means we're gonna get on an edge and we're gonna slip out. And that's the absolute most scary part about the board side. 
One thing that will help a lot when it comes to being in an awesome balanced position is making sure that your belly button is in the center of your board. You have a little bit of pressure on the front of your boot and you're in a nice relaxed position. So with that said, let's dive into four awesome steps that are gonna make your board slide 10 times easier and way safer. Woo! What you just saw was the backside board slide. Again, our goal is to be able to jump on to the box, go sideways and ride through the whole thing. But at first I don't recommend doing that because it can be very sketchy. Plus we need to train our body and our mind on how to slide sideways without trying to put the brakes on and slipping off. So my fun little secret slash hack to teaching people how to do board slides, our goal is actually do a 50-50 for the first 75% of the box. Now the beautiful part about this, we're not having to 100% commit to the jump and going sideways when we're not familiar with those body positions. So our goal is to go with 75% and then either use the pivot movement or use the scissor movement to get our board to go sideways or scissor movement higher up on the box. Now, why that is amazing is because we can get into the board side a little bit sooner and start to be aware of our body positions, but more importantly, train our body to be balanced without slipping out. Step number three is to do that pivot or that scissor movement to get into the board side even earlier. So this time we're only gonna ride the first 25% of the box and then we're gonna hold that board side position for the duration of the rest of the box. Pretty awesome. At this point, you're gonna be staying on the box for a long time. So make sure that you're getting comfortable and spend as much time as you need on step one, step two, step three before moving on to the next step. Step number four is going to be doing a little bit of a hop. Now our goal is to pop off of the jump just a little bit, do the board side movement while in the air, and then we actually wanna land with our board 90 degrees on the box. Now once we land, we're making sure that we land very gentle and very soft, so make sure you absorb the impact with your knees so that you have as much balance slash control as possible. Then we just get to hold that same awesome body position through the duration of the box. As a nice little bonus for you, you can challenge yourself by doing the little board side pivot movement, but as you land, have your belly button in a different spot over the rail or shift your board underneath you, allowing you to either board side more over your lead foot, more in center, or more of your back foot to give yourself a little bit of a challenge, but for your whole rest of your snowboard career, being able to have the ability to board side under your lead foot, back foot, or in the center is gonna lead to a lot of awesome tricks. So while you're here, I definitely recommend practicing that mechanic so that later you're feeling pretty awesome. Now the last thing I'm gonna ask from you is share it with a friend who could benefit from this awesome video and definitely save it so that you can refer back to it the next time you go snowboarding. So on that note, thank you so much for hanging out. Make sure you're subscribed with post notifications turned on and I'll see you in the next video. Woo! going to be in the house tommy bennett uh he's been doing a lot of uh online coaching physical coaching on mountains uh probably close to 200,000 followers if not more who knows whatever <laughs> but uh he's a great instructor and he decided to come out here and spend some time with us and since he's the one coaching uh i'm gonna let him introduce himself and whatever lesson you're gonna have yeah. for the crew yeah sick my dudes awesome to meet all of you a uh, little backstory about me, when I was younger, I was a competitive athlete. I had to work multiple jobs, I had to work real hard to make it happen. And I ended up breaking my back when I was 17. Completely changed my life. And what that's allowed me to do is it created a lot of opportunities to share my love for snowboarding with others. So a lot of my coaching and philosophy, it's coming from a place of maximizing balance, maximizing our ability to stay on our feet, and maximize having as much fun as possible. So coming into today, I want to share a couple little cheat codes that have worked for me and helped.